Okay, good morning from the Netherlands. I'm not going to try and pronounce the exact name of the place because I will no doubt butcher it. But we've just crossed over the border in Zeeland, I think, just at the south. So I thought today we'll do a, a little tour of the van. There's a lot of people on Facebook and stuff have been asking about it, so I thought this was easier than trying to reply to everybody. So, what is it? It's a 2002 Iveco Daily, long wheelbase, uh, high roof. I think you can get a slightly high roof, but this is high enough. There's enough headroom for me. Um, so on the outside, I've not done loads. I just sorted it out because when we got it, it was. Uh, a bit of a heap, all rusted and battered. The, the previous owner didn't look after it very well, but I've just sort of painted it, painted, repainted all the white and the black. Um, nothing great. It's uh, literally just brush painted, but it was cheap. It cost about. I don't know, 50 quid to paint the whole thing. And it's fine from here, obviously when you get a bit close, you can see, you can't really see on the camera. But yeah, you can see marks and brush strokes and stuff, but you know, whatever, I don't care. Saved a few thousand pound getting it spray painted, so <laughs> whatever, eh? The uh, first thing I guess you notice, well, first thing everyone else seems to be noticing is the wheels. So we could talk about them a little. I uh, obviously went for some bigger, bigger tyres. Um, you see the Kumo Road Ventures uh, MT51 for those who are interested. Um, they're like mud and snow, all-terrain things, um, and they are bigger than the standard tyres slightly, but they're on the standard rims. I just uh, sanded them down and you know, painted them black some enamel paint so hopefully should last very well me yeah, i mean the wheels are a bit unnecessary but i like them so <laughs> that's why i did it um but yeah so kumo road venture mt51 mud and snow for anyone who's interested they are quite expensive i think they're about 100 pounds a tire so if you want to make that commitment then uh, yeah go ahead and <laughs> uh, what else we got I and mean, we've got the wind deflectors they're pretty cool so you can have the window cracked and still get a bit of venting when it's raining and stuff and um, I changed out the indicator lenses uh, it's not really anything special but I didn't like the orange ones and then we come down the side and obviously we've got the window that's all oh, that's just the door for the toilet cassette because the, there is a full toilet and shower in here so we'll talk about that in a bit um, yeah so this window is literally just a, a cheap it's like 40 quid for a two identical ones on eBay they don't, they're not for this van or anything I just cut the hole and made them fit it's like uh, the H rubber and then the window just sits into it so it's pretty easy well I say it's pretty easy it took me bloody three days because I couldn't get it to fit but we'll skim over that um, and that just there is the vent for the battery compartment that I'll show when we go in the garage um, what else have we got? I suppose we could talk about go around the front. We've got some lights and stuff because I do like my lights. So we've got two LED spotlights down the front here. I'll have to show it at night. I'll show a picture of it at night. And then we've got the the small lights there, which will come on. And then up top, you see the small dots. They will come on. And then obviously we've got the massive 200 watt. LED bar which is pretty much like having a portable sun with you um, it's it's awesome 
that's probably my favourite thing I've put on the van, <laughs> to be honest. But, yeah. So come around here, and quick. There's the lovely lady inside. <laughs> I'll show you inside in a minute. Um, around this side, what have we got? So we've got this window as well. Now this window actually was, it is an Iveco window. I mean, I just found it on eBay. Um, but, it, you know, it's a proper, it opens and whatever. It was still hard to fit because I think it's for a bu uh, Iveco bus. Um, not exactly sure, but, but yeah, I just, just found it. It was cheap as well. Uh, then we'll come down a little bit and we've got the, the gas supply because it's got LPG refillable tank in there with a little vent at the bottom just for the gas. I'll show that when we go in. Around the back we've got some tree because I'm a good good at parking. Uh, you can see there we've got one spotlight, two spotlights. Oh. And then the reverse camera in the middle, and then obviously we have the. Uh, why is it not focusing? See the the small lights, like on the front. But obviously these ones are red. And then we have a second reverse camera at the bottom here. And when we go in the car, I'll show you why I decided to do two. Uh, I think you know for the extra like ten quid and a bit of effort it's worth it massively worth it on a van like this because it's so big and you see this thing is you know for someone who's used to riding motorbikes all the time this is ridiculous but i'm not sure what the exact size is i think it's um like 22 foot i know it's over seven meters so we'll have to see uh i can see the roof because there's quite a lot on the roof, but I uh, will go up and have a look. So now we can, we'll have a little look in the uh, cockpit, which I've put quite a lot of work into as well. Um, so you can see straight away when you come in, obviously those are not Iveco seats. They're from Honda Accord, I think, 2004. I just found them on eBay, quite cheap, about 70 quid for the pair. They're electric, heated, Although I've not connected the heating up yet because I don't think we really need it because of this. <laughs> but yeah, I just uh, made some brackets up for them and then mounted them to the Iveco bases and it just bolted straight in. It's all solid as a rock, so yeah, obviously you got the red, lovely red seat belts. I don't know why I bought them. I just wanted a splash of colour, I guess, <laughs> but I like them. Um, if you look down onto the floor, it's carpeted. It's it's quite heavily insulated, the floor. So that may be, I've had some people asking me about the tires, whether I can hear any road noise and stuff coming up through the cab. I think maybe the floor is helping with that because obviously they're, they're quite, quite knobbly, these tires are. So I don't know, but then again, this thing drives our truck and it's not really, uh, you know, saloon car smooth, that's for sure. But, yeah, so looking in the cab, obviously we have the carpets here. I've painted everything black, pretty much. Um, you see behind, I've made the bulkhead. It didn't, the van didn't come with a bulkhead, but uh, I wanted one in, so it was more privacy. And we have a little door in the middle there that leads through into the back the lockable thing and obviously it's not particularly secure if you wanted to break in you just kick the door down but stops eyes looking in we've got the speakers there and then in the middle this little guy here which is our sort of table slash drinks holder which i've just built on top probably should have cleaned up really before just built it on top of it's a little alpine subwoofer <laughs> so yeah that's where the subwoofer I like my music so that's why we've got that uh, the ceiling is it's like suede faux suede I guess it's called 
uh, just thought, thought it'd be a bit nicer than the normal grey carpet. Well, if we come into here, have a look at the uh, the cockpit. Oh, let's. Uh, it's not very wide, is it? This. Uh, this lens, so it's going to be tricky. But you should get an idea if I pop the key in. So everyone's been asking me about all these screens. So the first thing, I guess, this one here, this is the reverse cameras. So can you see? Yeah, so that one that's showing now, that is the camera that's on the foot plate underneath the van. So that points straight out and then works almost like a rear view mirror and then if I hit this button here we get a face full of tree but this one points straight down so you can see at the bottom there that is the foot plate so you can see you know whether you're within like an inch of touching something so obviously joining these two cameras together you're pretty much covered and if I hit anything with these, then there's a serious problem with my driving. I've got GPS here, pretty standard, just a Garmin. That's actually a motorbike, sat nav. But and then here for the dashboard, this is where it gets a bit different. Because obviously, anyone who has or has been in an RV co will know that that's not how they look. <laughs> so this whole area here is normally here, but. As you can see, I sort of cut out this section here, comes out, got rid of that, cut this area out, and this is where the CD player normally goes in the bottom here. Um, but I just didn't like it. So cut the hole for that, and then the cables and stuff all straight. Luckily, because it's all this whole van is like manual, there's not much electronics in it, so all of this is run on cables. Um, so it's really easy just to move it wherever you want it. And then we've got the uh, the entertainment system just here. Uh, this is what is it? Kenwood DDX14, I think. It's just a double DIN car stereo touchscreen thing. To the left here, we've got. Well, this guy that's like a outdoor temperature gauge and yeah it's uh, it's pretty warm let me see um, these are the ones here like this left switch here is if I want to turn off the power to the sat nav for whatever reason and this guy it turns on the cameras um, oh yeah that this little button here that turns on the screen so I can turn that off and then this bottom one turns all the cameras on these four here, they're all for the lighting. So like when I showed you the light bars on the roof and the little lights, just spotlights at the back um, and the fog lights at the front. That's what these guys do, you just flick them on. Little red LED to tell you that they're on. Although I won't, don't think I'd forget to be honest considering how bright they are. Um, I'm looking at the dashboard then, so the whole thing, you'll have to excuse these bits because it, I think I have did the glue a bit wrong or something. Um, most of it turned out quite well. I'm pretty happy with it. I mean, all the material, I probably paid about 60 quid for everything in there. You know, the, the suede for the roof. It's actually really nice. This, is, this has turned out well. This has stuck really nice. It's worked good. It's just the dashboard's gone a bit wrong. Maybe I didn't key the plastic enough. I did sand it before with some, uh, it was like 80 grit sandpaper, but maybe I didn't do it enough, I don't know. Um, but yeah, this is like a, a fake leather sort of thing. Um, and the, the whole dashboard is done. And that, and the steering wheel as well. I've decided to wrap that. It's not great, but the uh, the original wheel was pretty knackered so that's why I decided to go ahead and do that and my my epic attempt 
it's stitching a steering wheel. <laughs> but, uh, but yeah, I mean, I love it in here. I'm pretty proud of this area. I wanted it to be nice because obviously we're going to be spending a lot of time in here. So, oh yeah, and then, oops, fitted the cruise control as well. And that so far has been one of the best things because. <laughs> I found that on the iVico forum, um, it's brilliant. All you do is just buy the stalk on uh, like Vexy Parts, I think the company was called. Um, it was about 50 quid. And you got the plug under here and you literally just plug it in and then you've got cruise control. Simple as that. Like, <laughs> it's ridiculous. That's why I love this van. It's so simple. And I mean, I suppose we can talk about underneath the mechanical side of it. When when I got this van, it was like knackered, basically. It, you know, anyone else would have scrapped it, to be honest, because it was the rust. It was so bad. I mean, you could probably see. So a quick look under here. Uh, yeah, so you see the wheel arch area here, it's pretty dirty, so you can't see, but all this, like... So imagine that, that's where I've welded. That's all, all this is just metal plate that I've put in, bended round. So that it was like that for most of the van. So all in the bottom here, knackered. Like when I first bought this, first day, I went in the back and I fell through the floor. And cut all my leg up, it weren't... Yeah, it was ready for the scrap heap. But I only paid a thousand pounds for the van, so in my mind, if I had to spend a few grand on fixing it, it was uh, still going to be worth it because obviously it's a mileage is 130,000, which so I'm told for one of these is barely ran in. So, yeah, I mean, that's that was the, the thinking behind it, I guess. But I've done quite a lot of work. I mean, you know, I've put all new discs on. I've uprated the suspension as well. So at the back, as you can see here, you've got the double leaf now. Uh, standard, obviously, that's only one leaf. When we got it, that was snapped, which was <laughs> unbelievable. It was just holding on barely in here. So I drove it back about 70 miles on the motorway with a snapped rear leaf spring which uh, probably wasn't the best idea but I didn't know so you know what you don't know can't hurt you until it hurts you I guess <laughs> we've done a lot of work on the engine uh, you know, all the usual service stuff change all the belts and whatever but we've we had an oil leak um, uh, this is probably a good point actually for new iVeco owners if you do have an oil leak get it checked out before you do the conversion because I left it thinking it had been nothing and yeah it uh, turned out to be engine out because the, the leak was from the crankshaft carrier or something and it, yeah so I ended up paying over a thousand pounds in labour and parts and god knows but sorted now thank god J just before we picked it up at five o'clock on uh on the day we were leaving on <laughs> on tuesday yeah so if you've got one of these vans and it is dripping just check because yeah it's <laughs> that that one thing alone it's put a massive blow on the trip, obviously on the budget. So there's a lot of money out of our savings, but at least it, now we've, pretty much everything's changed. Um, you see under there, I've built like a aluminium plate covering the bottom of the engine as well, you know, just to be safe in case anything uh, wants to flick up and make any holes or <laughs> I don't know. But yeah, better safe than sorry. 10 quid piece of aluminium versus a you know a few thousand pounds worth of labor i'll take it right let's have a have a quick look inside then so what's new i guess this is new just a little bit on the step uh, you come in you can see that's the back of the 
my bulkhead that I've built with the door just here. Oi, falling over. So that goes straight into the cabin. Uh, just above that we've got a little cupboard. Well, a little cupboard, massive cupboard. That's where we're going to keep all the uh, coats and whatever else. Looks a bit trash at the minute, but... Clock. Here's the bathroom. This is directly behind the driver. Well, not really a bathroom. Shower, cubicle. There is a toilet though, like I said earlier. One of the uh, Thetford, I think it's called. Manual, manual flush. Less to break, in my opinion. Um, you know, the shower is literally just the basic shower and then up here got the switch which turns on the pump for the tank you know there's no mixing there's no hot and cold and that's where I get to that um, but it's just a shower it's you know better to have it than not have it got the tray there and that just goes straight outside um, a little cabinet thing there and then the shower rail is just some PVC pipe that I did. And it can go around a couple of lights. Just these low wattage LED. These are throughout the whole van, these lights are. So you can see, and then there's close that. And the floor's just like laminate. But I say the the whole van is heavily insulated. I did that's one thing I spent quite a bit of money on was the insulation. Uh, but this is the kitchen. So we've got like the two two ring hob that's powered off the LPG. Um, and that's the back of the door. We've got like a blind that I've built into the door. Just built a frame around it here. And then that just opens up like that. But I built the frame around it and then screwed it down at the bottom here. So obviously it doesn't flap around like while you're driving and stuff because that would just be annoying. Uh, yeah. So moving down, this is like the oh yeah. So there's the sink area. That's like our little rack thing that I made. Um, some more lights under the cabinet there. We've got the cupboards above. These just pop open like that. The little gas struts. I didn't really finish inside, um, but you don't see it anyway, so I didn't really care. Got like the the, the work surface itself is just a uh, like acrylic panel. Uh, it's like six mil, I think. And same for the back. That's just like a splash back made of the same stuff. Uh, just put up a little sink, got the tap. Only the cold water works, but I thought it looked cool. Better than having one of those pump things because they're under here. This is where all the tank is. So we've got a little button there that turns on the pump, which is just here. And then that you use the tap. And that just goes into a 25 litre water tank, fresh water tank here. And the bottom out of the sink, it just goes straight down into this tank, which is the same. Obviously, we just use that for the grey. Uh, and then that is piped. It's a bit dark, isn't it? Mm. Let me get a torch. <laughs> Might help, yeah. So, that grey water tank there, you can see that comes out into there. And this pipe at the bottom here with a, a ball valve and then that goes outside under the van so you can just drop it into the drain or whatever just pull that valve and it empties that tank so you never have to take this tank out but obviously this one you can take out and refill it yeah so that's pretty much the kitchen and there's not much else those drawers it's like a drawer cabinet uh, put, I put these little latches on so that they can't open while we're driving. Um, but yeah, I just built it into it and then the whole thing is just made out of plywood. So, a little area at the top for pans and whatever. And yeah, little K 
key rack thing there, something to hold the kettle. Obviously that gets hot once you've uh, made a tea with it. <laughs> so here's the seating area. It's really basic, just you know, table. We've got like a USB outlet down there for charging phones and whatever else. Uh, there's that window. Little blind. It's just a normal house roller blind. Um, and you just pull the cord here. And then it's got a little bit of Velcro on the bottom there, which we attach onto there. So that, because obviously the the side of the van is curved, so if you don't attach it onto there, the blind will hang out to like here when you you know when you put it down. So that's why that's like that. Uh, just above that, we have some storage. It's like just did sliding doors. It's a bit of a mess at the minute, but so we've only been in here for three days. So you can see in here, look, that is some of the insulation. So what we've got insulation wise, um, first there is, it's called XPE foam, it's like closed cell foam with um, adhesive on one side, it's black stuff stick that on the metal and then we have a layer of that gold bubble wrap foil stuff um, then there's two layers of 30 mil thinsulate which is like plastic wall insulation same as what you get in coats that was quite dear and all together that probably cost about 100 quid just for that thinsulate stuff but the two layers of that so the 60 mil of that and then another layer of the bubble wrap and then this is just hardboard. That's what's covering everything else. Is just wooden battens all the way along, and then hardboard screwed into it. Um, but yeah, <clears throat> that's that's everywhere. So that's on all the walls, the floor, and the ceiling, and of, yeah, in the cab, and the ceiling in the cab there. Um, but yeah, so. The idea was I wanted you know go overkill with that, and then it'd sort of stay cooler in the uh, in the summer and warmer. Hopefully when it's cold. Well, that's the plan anyway. Whether it will or not, I don't know. So far, it's staying pretty cool. So we're okay. But yeah, so I'm moving on. Under these, these aren't just seats. So under here, you have the tank for the shower. So there's another pump inside that tank, a few water, water jugs down there. So that just goes into the shower. We want to use that. And under here, if I can do it one-handed, is oh, this is the fridge. Uh, so it's just like a little chest, 12 volt, little chest frizz. And let's lift that, there you go. So you can see in there. And that's just running off the toilet. It can run off the inverter as well, but at the minute it's just running off the 12 volt. Um, yeah. So under here is the garage. I'll show you that from the back. But you can see, sort of. Yeah, we're just drying some towels and stuff. But we've got like the bikes in there and all the other storage. Oh, so this is the in this is the gas area, and I just made a little hatch just to be able to turn it on and off. So it's like an LPG tank in there, and obviously that goes to outside. But there's a valve on top, so when we're not using it, when we're driving and whatever, it's better to just turn it off and be safe. Uh, TV, little 12 volt TV. And then the bed, that's pretty straightforward. It's just a bed. I had to cut the edge here, just to, but it is a double mattress, full size double, just with that corner cut off. So that we can get in and got some more room. Just like a it's foam. How thick is it? I don't know. Six inches maybe. Um, and we've got switches up here. So that's the LEDs around the bed. And then that one there is a fan that I've put into this vent. That's just sliding wardrobe storage. A little bit more storage down there. Nothing amazing. Just where we put all the clothes and stuff. Now this 
is my favorite part this hatch here so let's get up onto the bed which is it does look tight but you just stand on here hold on that and then you straight up not too bad but you can see this hatch is brilliant I built it all myself just out of plywood and stuff because I'm not spending four or five hundred pound on one of them plastic fantastic things I mean they're probably good but this probably cost me 20 pounds max so it's just built into there obviously it's insulated as well with a little basic way to hold it up so you've got two notches here and that can go there like that or the best part about it I made it so I can get out so you fold that all the way back just there and then out we go so now wherever we are you see we get a good view we're just at a little campsite at the minute uh, didn't really want to stay in campsites but we're not really sure what the rules and stuff are here yet so we're not not worked it out but now we're on the roof you see the massive solar panel that I put on I'm not sure what it is I think it's 300 watts I got it with like a kit with a controller and everything for the battery bank and so far it's been good there's a TV aerial and there's the, the other little vent that we can use at night that one's got a bug net on it and a a fan as well it's probably not as good I know most people on YouTube use those what are they fantastic fans I've seen them but mine's just a, a 12 inch PC fan <laughs> that I put in there so this was about 40 quid and the fan was free because I already had it you got a little speed controller at the side but yeah that one opens like that pretty straightforward but yeah saved a lot of money with that one because I know they're over 100 quid as well yeah. and then we've got a little headboard at the back that I made out of an old couch that we've got for free actually on Gumtree oh yeah <laughs> so that's where the solar part leads go in and then they go into this cabinet and down into the garage which I'll show you now we'll go around the back and I'll show you the garage right so here is this is the garage if you like <laughs> it is a bit a bit of a mess um, but I say we've only been in here a few days and we're still sort of getting used to everything and you know finding where places need to be and stuff but you see we've got the bikes there a couple of chairs and obviously that's that's the bed and the lights under there they're just like LED batten things little ones um, and then this is this sort of storage thing it's just a cheapo drawers with a bungee so that they don't open so you've got all your bits medical drawer hopefully we don't need that too much and some more storage there for whatever camera gear that's all the toilet stuff all the fluids and whatever else you need um, <coughs> A little bit of storage on the side here, not a lot, but for long items. And then here, I'm sure this is the bit that most people are going to want to look at. For the techie people, <clears throat> so this is the power centre kind of thing. Obviously that's important, fire extinguisher. But that, that guy there is the charge controller for the solar. Um, obviously it all came as like a kit. You got the inverter there, it's just a little 2000 watt thing, cheapo thing. It's probably not great, but so far it's worked out quite well. That's uh, so the 12, the batteries are in this box here. It's 310 amp hour uh, batteries in there. I'm not going to be able to lift that up because it's got stuff on it, but everyone knows what a battery looks like, so they're in there, and then that feeds out through that so that I can turn off everything in the van if I need to so you know if there's an emergency or whatever and then go out of this bar here it's probably not the right way to do it but it's worked so far 
and I've got like a little charging shelf up here for all the camera batteries and the autofocus on this camera is rubbish uh, and yeah whatever you want to do up there some more storage here that's the back of the um, the gas box it's all sealed sealed all around that hatch is sealed when you close it and then it, if it leaks it vents outside through that grill um, but yeah I mean I suppose I better say like I'm not a professional or anything you know I've gone into this with no experience I didn't really know what I was doing I just you know YouTubed whatever I didn't know or the internet and uh, yeah just winged it but that's why I've been able to do this whole thing because I think in total the whole conversion including buying the van was about five grand um, that's not including the oil leak at the end obviously that was more but yeah so buying it and building it is about five grand if I'd have paid for the welding like the labor on the welding and all of that and the body work structural work it would have been just impossible project so but yeah if you've uh, got any more questions hopefully I've covered everything but I didn't really want this video to be like three hours long it's probably gonna be long anyway but just give me a give me a message if you've got any more questions I'll be happy to answer them so I know uh, a lot of people are into this kind of thing so <laughs> but not many people have done it with these vans I believe so yeah any questions give me a shout and I will uh, I'll get back to you so thanks for watching yeah, for the for the showering for the warm water we just got these little shower bags like solar bags when we want to have a shower put the water in them stick it outside for a little bit and that warms up and you can chuck it in that tank under the seat and then there's your warm shower but when it's warm you just want a cold shower anyway so it doesn't really matter but yeah they're handy to have